Welcome, gentle listener. I am Voldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and mysteries of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the future. You'll excuse me if this entry is lacking a long tail at the beginning, as I am still recovering from the rather tiring exertions of cooking up the whopping banquet for the Imperial Fists I put out for us all this week. So a snack only today, my apologies. I'm sure we shall be back to regular entries next week, when I've caught up on my sleep and I'm not quite so fatigued. But as it is Friday, I felt I would be remiss if I did not put something on the table, snack though it be. Today, we are to discuss one of the more obscure pieces of lore about one of the first founding chapters, the Salamanders. Always a treat in my mind. So, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Vulcan Hestan, Forge Father of the Salamanders. According to the ancient lore, the Primarch Vulcan scattered nine artifacts across the galaxy, both to prevent them from falling into the hands of mankind's enemies, and because he knew that even the grandest prize is as nothing should it be seized without challenge. As Forge Father, it is Vulcan Hestan's quest to find and reclaim these heirlooms. Since the Primarch Vulcan's disappearance, the Salamanders have ever appointed a Forge Father to seek their Gene Sire's lost legacy. This title is far from a simple honorific. Only truly exceptional heroes of the Salamanders are chosen to serve in the role. For the Forge Father's sole duty demands a focus, endurance and unassailable determination possessed by few even amongst Vulcan's sons. The Forge Father cannot simply be a skilled battlefield strategist. He must possess so versatile a strategic mind that he can respond to trials and dangers no warrior could prepare for in advance. He must also be surprisingly resilient of mind and body, able to endure whatever tests his quests impose on him. With an ironclad spirit, the Forge Father must accept the possibility that his whole life may be spent in pursuit of a goal never attained and yet still live always in hope. In short, the Forge Father must be the best of the Salamanders in all things. At the close of the 41st millennium, the burden of such expectations lies firmly upon the shoulders of Forge Father Hestan. Hestan had served with distinction for nearly a century when the chapter's ruling Pantheon Council commanded he set aside his duties as a leader of the Fourth Company and donned the mantle of Forge Father. As Hestan relinquished his old titles and responsibilities, so too did he cast off his forename without hesitation. The ancient rituals of the Salamanders dictate he who shall follow in Vulcan's footsteps shall proudly bear the Primarch's name in place of his own. Hestan has walked a crooked path through the galaxy, guided from system to system by clues found within the Tome of Fire. Many of the worlds Hestan has visited have been in the hands of traitorous humans, Xenos invaders, or worse. Such places can only be investigated once they have been scoured clean by fire and blade, and the warriors of Nocturne do not hesitate to bring their full might to bear against such targets when required. Believing that Vulcan will return to lead them again once his nine artifacts have been recovered, the Salamanders would endure any woe and suffer any loss to retrieve the Primarch's gifts. Only four of the nine relics remain for Hestan to find, the others having been recovered by previous holders of his illustrious position. Of the five artifacts retrieved, Hestan himself keeps three, whilst the other two are space-bound relics in orbit around Prometheus, the forge ship Chalice of Fire, and the defense laser known as the Eye of Vulcan. The remaining artifacts are as yet known only in name. The Engine of Woes, the Obsidian Chariot, the Unbound Flame, and the Song of Entropy. In the wake of the Great Rift's opening, many believed that the devastating empiric disruption to communication and travel have rendered Heston's quest impossible. Yet it is in this dark hour that a fresh clue has revealed itself, an ember burning bright in the dark of the Imperium Nihilus, upon a world named Zero, an ember that hints at the location of the Unbound Flame. The Artifacts of Vulcan The Artifacts of Vulcan are nine artifacts forged by the Primarch Vulcan, 
the only survivors of what was once a vault of thousands. Of these, seven were chosen by the Forge Father to Kel, whilst the other two were carried by Vulcan to Istvan V. Before heading to battle against Horus, following the events of Istvan III, Vulcan travelled to Prometheus to meet with Forge Faster to Kel. After discussing how weapons can be abused, and how Horus's treachery represented that even the best of them could fall, Vulcan decided that he must destroy all of his artifacts, the weapons he was created to make. Vulcan took Dekel into his vaults and allowed him to see many weapons, ranging from simple blades to mighty machines created within. Vulcan tasked Dekel with their destruction, but Dekel pleaded for clemency, saying that they represented Vulcan's legacy and could possibly be used for good just as they could be used for evil. Vulcan relented on the order, declaring that Dekel would be his forge father, bound to Nocturne and unable to travel with them to Istvan V. This disturbed Kekel, but Vulcan allowed him to choose seven artifacts which he would preserve as the legacy. The Unbound Flame, the Obsidian Chariot, the Spear of Vulcan, the Song of Entropy, the Chalice of Fire, the Eye of Vulcan, and the Engine of Woes. The names were not always the original ones given by Vulcan. Some were named after legend that formed around them. If Vulcan was to fall, then the artifacts would be hidden. The rest, those not chosen, would have to be destroyed before Vulcan returned from the battle. Tekel was then left with the task to choose. Vulcan took his hammer, Dawnbringer, the gauntlet of the forge, and Kasari's mantle and Vulcan's sigil, a hammer that formed part of the Primarch's Draken scale was recovered by Pyre Captain Artelis Numion at Istvan V. Within the Chalice of Fire, Tekel destroyed many of the artifacts in the ship's massive furnace, watching the inferno through armor glass as he despaired over the loss. He felt it was the second loss of Vulcan after the loss on Istvan. He explained to the Fire Drake Captain Raz Obek that two of the items to be spared were the ship itself and a weapon upon its hull in addition to five other artifacts. The forge of the ship was so hot that nothing could stand against it. Obek believed that it was for the best that the weapons be destroyed instead of possibly falling to the traitors, and Tekel speculated that it was probably why Obek and his men were left behind to guard Prometheus and oversee their destruction. When the salamanders arrived at the Rort, they discovered that Regulus and the sons of Horus had arrived before them. Embattled in the vault, they were rescued by elements of the Shattered Legions, under Iron Father Castigan Alloc. When the Iron Father discovered the nature of the relics the Salamanders carried, he demanded that they surrender them to him so that he could use them to find and kill Horus. The Eye of Vulcan fired on the Iron Hand's battle barge, destroying it and killing the Forge Father who was still aboard. In the aftermath of the battle, the Chalice of Fire was severely damaged, operating under failing power reserve. The remaining Salamanders aboard entered stasis to watch over the artifacts as they drifted through the void. The first of the artifacts was not recovered until Millennium 41, when a force of Salamanders under the direction of Forge Father Vulcan Dirsan discovered the drifting Chalice of Fire. The Eye of Vulcan was still attached, but the other artifacts had been stolen from the breached vault. End quote. Now the ongoing quest for the missing artifacts of Vulcan is picking up speed indeed. As we have heard, since the 41st millennium over half have been located and reclaimed, and now one more arises. Surely if this one is found it would leave only three more to be located. And that could happen as matters unfold, even in this edition, unlikely as that may seem, it is always possible. For the return of the Primarchs has been all but confirmed in recent publications from Black Library, and with one loyal Primarch already on the tabletop and two for chaos, the cat is well and truly out of the bag. The horse has bolted, and there is simply no closing the gates now. So Games Workshop, in the immortal words of the Monty Pythons, Get on with it! We all want our chap in charge to be in our collections. So just for the love of the Holy Throne, get on with it! The little teases. <laughs>
I have been Baltimore, your faithful servant. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction to some of the mysteries of the Salamanders, and if so, please do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.